Hi guys! So today I want to talk about something that my friend Stacy actually talked to me about. Um, so in relationships, oftentimes we have bad breakups, like really awful breakups that just seem like they can't ever patch itself up. Things are gone, the energy of the relationship is gone, and it's just done. And for me, at least, I've had many of these relationships. Uh, when I say relationships, I mean in platonic terms. I've never had a romantic relationship in my life, but um, yeah. This can refer to any form of relationship, to be honest. And so I actually... The most recent relationship I've had that's like this is one with my ex-best friend named Kathy, in which I really depended on her senior year of high school, and she tried, she tried everything to be there for me, but in the end it was so taxing and it was so hard, and she had to just like out things bad things happened between us and our relationship just broke apart I tried fixing things I did I honestly did I, I I begged her I said I was sorry but she was fed up with it she told me literally that she doesn't care about I'm sorry she cares about the actions done so that you don't have to say sorry. Ever since then, I have been very upset. I've been very depressed, and people have been criticizing me, uh, people meaning Kathy's friends, that I never move on, that, you know, I always try to, you know, make amends with her and, you know, be her friend, etc., etc. And I've always been angry at them always. Kathy since then has done literally everything to get away from me. She's literally blocked me in every form of social media. And if I were to just say, like, like her Instagram image one time, and I just liked it, bam, she just blocks me. And I don't understand how our relationship came to this like where there's so much hate like there's so much hate that simply liking an Instagram photo or viewing like a LinkedIn profile or something like that is just gonna cause you to block the other person and at times like this, I am upset and angry, you know? I'm not gonna lie, I'm angry because I, while I know I did a lot of wrong, there's a, this part of me that says, well, you know, Kathy, aren't you weren't you supposed to be my friend? Weren't you supposed to forgive me and understand me, you know? And I talked to Stacy about this. What she said is really amazing. Uh, I, I gotta say, it's really amazing. And Stacy, if you're watching this, thank you for telling me. Um, she says, I've got to learn to forgive Kathy. Even if she doesn't forgive me. And it's hard, because sometimes I find myself in a position where I can't forgive myself either. But I've got to learn how to do both. Forgive her and forgive myself. But forgiveness does not mean forget. And I think that in society, we often think and we often feel that forgiveness is supposed to mean, no, that never happened. Pretend like that specific situation never happened. That's not forgiveness. So I think that this can best be explained by a metaphor that Stacy was talking about with me. 
imagine our relationship with, let's say my relationship with Kathy or anyone, to be a plate. And this plate slowly just starts breaking. I yell at her, break, break, break. I get upset and put my anxiety on her, which is technically often the reason I yell at her, break, break, break. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm the only person, but you know, the two, there are things that happen both ways. Trust tends to like pull, pull away from each other. And before you know it, that entire plate is broken. Now, when the plate is broken, people will do either of two things, and both of these things are actually wrong. One thing that you may do, which is something that I often try to do, is you try to glue it back together and pretend like there was no crack, there was no, there was no, th th there's no sign of any breakage or anything. It never broke. The relationship is 100% stable, you know? Like, it's right away you're back to where you were in the first place. This doesn't work out because when you don't recognize the mistakes that you made in the past or the mistakes that another person made or that both of you have had issues in this relationship, you fail to fix anything. You fail to move forward with this relationship. The second attempt, the, the, the second option, which is just to chuck all of the plate and throw it in the trash, meaning chuck out all of the pieces of the plate, uh, which basically means forget about your friend, forget about that other person. And this is te technically an option left for like very extreme circumstances. But there are several people who will just do this as, hey, you screwed with me, so now it's over, we're done. But this isn't a good idea either. Because now, you're also saying that this problem doesn't exist anymore. But instead, you're also, you're basically saying, it never existed in the first place. Like the other person never existed. He's he or she was never in my life, and you know, let's just pretend like none of this happened. Like let's just pretend we didn't even meet. Both of these viewpoints are unsuccessful, for the most part. But then Stacy told me about this article where it mentioned an artist who took the pieces of this broken plate, glued it back together, but highlighted the cracks where he or she uh, broke the plate, and he highlighted it with a leaf. And for some reason, it was just this beautiful product, just highlighting that it in, it in and of itself became a product of beauty. What this reminds me of is that I think it represents the fact that Yes, I think both sides in a relationship should try to work together and recognize each other's mistakes and forgive each other. Forgiveness, however, does not mean forget. We don't just, day one, we go back to where we were in the past. We say, okay, I messed up here. I'm sorry. What can I do to correct it? And you know, we're open to each other's hearts and to each other's feelings. We put each other 
we put ourselves in the other person's shoes. And this is a difficult thing for me, definitely. Because for me, I have Asperger's and trying to put myself in someone's shoes is very difficult because I am very anxious. I'm an ang anxious person and it makes it hard on me to see another person's perspective when I myself have anxiety. And on the, uh, on the other hand, people don't see my perspective very well. They don't realize what it's like to go through the anxiety that I do go through. And that too makes it hard. But this is my goal now, and not just with Kathy, but with any of my severe relationships. I want to come to a point where we both forgive each other, and we both learn to really accept one another and care about one another, and strengthen our relationship through that, through our past mistakes through our bad arguments or bad breakups or whatnot. And by breakups, I don't necessarily mean anything romantic. I, I've never been in a romantic relationship. Again, breakups is a general term. Another thing that Stacy told me that is amazing I think is the belief that everyone wants to be good everyone wants to do good to the world everyone wants to know that they were helpful in some way and I think that this is hard for me to see when people are consistently ignoring me, consistently blocking me, and consistently treating me as if like I don't exist. But this is just their immature way of thinking they're doing something right when they're not. And in these situations, I have to be the smart guy. I have to be the mature guy who loves them regardless. It's difficult. It's hard. It's tedious. Three words that are basically synonyms for each other. But it's something I have to do. I don't know how it's finding out how it, like that still perplexes me but I know I'll figure out some way in the moment it's really easy to say oh no he or she did this against me so he or she must be my enemy and I'm definitely not suggesting that the other person who committed wrong against you should be excused by any means. But I am saying that he or she should be forgiven, regardless of whether or not he or she understands the implications of their actions and how much they hurt you. Forgiveness and love go hand in hand. Love is not a selfish thing. It's not you love me so I love you back. It's I love you regardless of whether or not you love me back. And this also means sometimes you're gonna have to love someone 
who doesn't treat you very well, who doesn't respect you, or someone who used to respect you very well and now doesn't anymore, which is basically the case of Kathy. But that's okay. It's okay. In fact, I believe that everything will be better in the end and that there will be a day where not only Kathy and I but other friends and I will be able to talk and we'll be able to eat together we'll be able to laugh at the past and we'd be able to understand that yes the past happened but that they all made us stronger they made our relationship stronger they made our appreciation for each other stronger in these past few months uh, without Kathy or without some of my friends I've actually understood more how much she means to me whereas when she was there I didn't really understand that so that's all I really wanted to say today you know let's let's try to see things from another point of view and it doesn't mean that your point of view is wrong by no means am I suggesting that you very well might be right but we're human beings it's not always about right and wrong it's about understanding each other it's about loving each other and recognizing that we're not all perfect I hope maybe one day my friends my loved ones, Kathy, they all get to know everything I went through and how I felt, and that I will be able to get to know everything they went through and why they did what they did. And I hope that we'll all become a better person for it. Or become better people, if you want to be grammatically correct. Thank you, everyone. Good night.